the rule of the khaljis especially alauddin khilji is of importance in history why so because of his political stability and administrative efficiency however after his death in 1320 ce we see a fall in the khilji dynasty however in the very same year ghazi malik who took the title of giyazuddin tughlaq emerged in the year 1320 ce and started the tughlaq dynasty which was another part of the next step of the delhi sultanate so let's learn about this tughlaq dynasty now after the death of giyazuddin tughlaq his son came to power so his name was muhammad bin tughlaq and he is considered to be a scholar king the most educated one amongst all it is said that he had complete control over astronomy mathematics medicine and had great interest in philosophy as well as religion so he was a scholarly king and he was very well educated he was also an avid lover of persian literature fine arts music and calligraphy this is how india looked like under the tughlaq rule muhammad bin tughlaq came into power in the year 1325 ce the very next year in 1326 ce he had his first administrative idea so what was this he increased the rate of taxation and introduced some added land taxes in the fertile region of ganga yamuna doab which you can see in the map here this was actually a great idea because this area was very fertile so this was done so that more revenue could be generated from this area however that very same year the doab region witnessed a severe famine now what happened is that now the farmers had faced a famine right so they did not they did not have food for themselves and so they could not pay these taxes so they refused to pay these taxes and there were repercussions however when mohammed bin tughlaq got to know about all of this he advanced loans to the peasants and ordered free distribution of grains from the state and improved irrigation facilities too so he gave a lot of help to these poor farmers but what had happened that this help had reached the farmers very late and a lot of the people had by that time died of starvation so his motives were pure however his execution was bland the next thing that happened was that he decided to shift his capital in 1327 ce now take a look at this map of india here at this point of time this was their capital delhi was their capital however if you look at the map he decided to shift his capital from delhi to daulatabad or devagri now what happened he thought that if he was here if he was ruling from this place then he would have control over all of this region which you can see marked in blue right however do you think it's a good idea to shift his capital what do you think about it other than that delhi was also threatened by frequent mongol invasions delhi at this point of time was the center of power and so it was more likely that the mongols could attack it through the northern frontier so what did he do he decided to shift the capital from delhi to daulatabad because he wanted his subjects to feel safe now what happened is that during this time delhi was facing a terrible famine so he made his decision of shifting his capital final right now he asked his subjects to move from delhi to down south however what happened is that there was no transportation available however now there was a problem with the plan what was that that when he asked his subjects to move from delhi and travel down to daulatabad what happened summer was going on at that point of time so many people died of heat and dehydration so there was this very important point that led to the administrative failure of this important decision so he always had big plans however the execution of these plans were poor these things led to him getting a new name of the mad king so he got a new title called the mad king because of such administrative failures so can you answer this question mohammed bin tughlaq shifted the capital from dash to daulatabad is it kolkata ayodhya 
Chennai or Delhi? The correct answer is Delhi. Mohammed bin Tughlaq shifted the capital from Delhi to Dawlatabad. Now, there were a few consequences of him deciding to shift his capital. What were these? Well, if you take a look at this map here, you can see that Delhi acts as a frontier portion for his entire empire. So, basically his empire was safe from foreign attacks from outside when the capital was in Delhi. However, when he decided to shift to Dawlatabad, Delhi was now open and unprotected and was now prone to foreign invasions. Because of this now, he ordered a shift back to Delhi. So, first he asked his subjects to come here to Dawlatabad and then again he asked people to go back. So, this to and fro movement travelling of all of his subjects Firstly, was very much time consuming, money consuming and also a lot of people died while traveling. So, this was a very, very big failure from Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Now, let's move on and see another administrative failure by Muhammad bin Tughlaq. He was the one who introduced token currency, the kind we even use in this day and age in India, right? So, he issued bronze coins and declared them to be of similar value to si silver coins. So, how can bronze coins be of similar value to silver coins? Well, this was done so that the shortage of silver that was faced by the state at that point of time could be balanced out. So, these silver coins were called Tanka, which you can see here in this picture. And this move by him was inspired by the Chinese as they had their own Chinese paper currency during that point of time. Now, not only that, there was a problem with what he had done. You see, when he had produced these coins, the, when the state had made these coins, they did not put a royal insignia on these token currency coins. And thus, they were easily forged. Now what happened? Soon the markets were flooded with forged coins because there was no royal insignia on these token currency, right? So, forged coins came into existence and the empire was faced with an inflation. So, to tackle that, he did something else. He decided to withdraw all these coins, including the forged ones, and replace them with silver tanka. So, we can once again see how he replaced these coins with silver and gold. So, there was again money going out, outflow of money from the state treasury, right? So, this was again a loss for Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Now, did you know that the word Tanka for silver coins was coined by Il Tutmish, the successor of Qutubuddin Aibak in the Mamluk dynasty, which is a and its corrupted version, Taka, is still in use in Bangladesh. So, their currency in Bangladesh is called Taka. Now, while Muhammad bin Tughlaq's military experiments were a success, some of them, just like his administrative decisions, came out or turned out to be failures. These were not because he lost all of the wars that he was a part of, no. But what he was doing is that in the middle of it, he would usually withdraw his funds. And so that would be the total fund that he had put in the war was a waste now, right? So because of this, again, we can see that even in military, he was failing, right? Now, one such experiment was the Khurasan or the Khurasan expedition. In this, he built a strong standing army and paid a full year's salary as advance to the soldiers, which was not done before this. The soldiers would usually be paid after the war. But what he had done, that he had paid an, an entire year's salary beforehand. So again, the state's treasury was at loss here, right? Now what happened? After a few internal conflicts, because of internal conflicts in the empire, Muhammad bin Tughlaq abandoned this plan and he had to disband the army. So, in the middle of the war, he withdrew his funds and had to go back. So, we can once again see how this was a big blow to the state treasury. Now, let's move on to the next military expedition. Well, this expedition was undertaken in the year 1330 CE and it was primarily done to counter Chinese incursions and to counter rebellious tribes of Kumao Garhwal region 
and bring them under the sultanate however there were a few setbacks faced by him here again what were these though his forces saw initial success when the monsoon season came in their lack of preparation forced them to retreat so you see when the monsoon season came in they were not expecting it so transportation becomes a problem when it rains not only that they did not have waterproof material they did not have anything to cover themselves and protect themselves keep themselves safe from the rain so that was a very important setback that they faced and once again we can see that mon money wise they had lost again all of these military and administrative failures made him a very unpopular ruler so much so that he had ruled for 26 years but even during that 26 years of rule he had to face 22 rebellions he ultimately died in 1351 ce suppressing a revolt in sindh so throughout his reign he had to face many many rebellions and had to suppress those so he was a very unpopular ruler and even got the title of mad king his plans were always his motives were always towards an aim and had a goal however the execution and the planning part always failed from his end and that is why most of his plans were unsuccessful after muhammad bin tughlaq since he had no male heirs what happened is that his cousin came into power his name was firoz shah tughlaq and he came into power in 1351 ce right after muhammad bin tughlaq it was him who decided to do many new things for his people because people at that point of time were not very happy with the tughlaq dynasty so what did he do he introduced several reforms in irrigation constructed roads gardens mosques and even constructed manufacturing units called karkhanas not only that he also set up a department of charity called diwani khairat to give financial help to the poor in times of need so we can see how firoz shah tughlaq was a very considerate ruler and wanted his subjects to be happy with him not only that he also founded four towns fatehabad hisar firozabad and Jaunpur Jaunpur and Fatehabad are in Uttar Pradesh so he founded these towns now it was also during his reign that the famous Qutub Minar which is situated in Delhi was hit by lightning now because of that there was some damage and so he reconstructed it and later on he added two more stories to it so previously there were just four stories however what did he do he added another story to it so finally there are five floors in the Qutub Minar now now why did the tughlaq dynasty finally decline let's learn about this now firstly under muhammad bin tughlaq several provinces had become independent now other than that during his time there were also many foreign invasions one such invasion was by timur he had control over parts of afghanistan iran and parts of central asia so he also invaded india in 1398 CE now because of such invasions it ultimately led to the decline of the tughlaq dynasty so the invasion of timur further weakened the tughlaq empire and along with that it also allowed several regional chiefs to become much more independent lastly at the same point of time their power continued to decline until they were finally overthrown by their former governor of multan whose name was kizr khan so with this we come to an end of the tughlaq dynasty and in the beginning of sayyid dynasty so this was the first ruler of the sayyid dynasty known as kizr khan who was the former governor of multan for the tughlaq dynasty so the sayyid dynasty was the next dynasty in the delhi sultanate so the tughlaq dynasty finally came to an end and was replaced by sayyid dynasty which was the new rulers of the delhi sultanate however sayyid dynasty was not a very popular dynasty it ruled between 1414 ce to 1451 ce finally they were replaced by the lodi dynasty bahlal lodi 
defeated them and established the rule of Lodi dynasty over the Delhi Sultanate. So, the Lodi dynasty was the fifth and final dynasty of Delhi Sultanate. Now, the last ruler of Lodi dynasty was Ibrahim Lodi who had to face Babur in the famous first battle of Panipat in 1526 CE in which he lost. So, this was the end of Delhi Sultanate in India and after them came the Mughal Empire. So, these were the people or the rulers of the Tughlaq dynasty. Firstly, we have Gyazuddin Tughlaq who ruled from 1320 CE to 1325 CE. After which we come to Muhammad bin Tughlaq who ruled from 1325 CE to 1351 CE in a period of for a period of 26 years. After which we come to his cousin Feroz Shah Tughlaq who ruled from 30, 13, who ruled from 1351 CE to 1388 CE. So these were the rulers of the Tughlaq dynasty. The Tughlaq dynasty was then replaced by another dynasty called the Sayyid dynasty. And Khizr Khan was the ruler who began the Sayyid dynasty, who came into power in 1414 CE and, and his, his reign ended in the year 1421 CE. So, the next dynasty in line was the Lodi dynasty which was started by Bahlul Lodi in 1451 CE. His power ended in 1489 CE. The last ruler of the Lodi dynasty was Ibrahim Lodi who was there from 1517 CE to 1526 CE who was finally and ultimately defeated by the Mughal Emperor Babur after which the reign of the Mughals come in India. So, we see how the famous and the dynamic Delhi Sultanate finally comes to an end almost 300 years later. There were several rulers in this Delhi Sultanate which involved several dynasties as well starting with the slave or the Mamluk dynasty followed by Khilji dynasty then came the Tughlaq dynasty next came the Sayyid dynasty and fifth and foremost the Lodi dynasty. So, these are the five dynasties of the Delhi Sultanate. And they all had their own religious, social, economic, administrative policies, some of which have even survived the ravages of time and are still prevalent in India today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free on deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app and get easy access to more than 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and get a chance to win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.